Ignore Mike and his girlfriend. In this video, we're gonna talk about the reasons why you haven't lost weight, but you've stuck to your diet. Happens to a lot of people, doesn't it? It does, yeah. But we're gonna tell you why that's the case. Are we? Let's get going. Okay. <laughs> Number one. Point one. Point one is that you pay no attention to the amount of water you've drunk and the amount of salt you've eaten. That can drastically affect the amount you weigh. Don't forget that scale weight is the measurement of weight, not body fat. So it doesn't mean if you've gone up that you've gone up in body fat. If you've stuck to your diet, then you know that physiologically you can't have gained any, any body fat. Yeah. So for example, if you drank more yesterday or drank less yesterday, you may be more hydrated or dehydrated more salt in the diet yeah. might lead to a little bit more water retention. So if you have spiked up, like if you've had a particularly salty meal the night before, then yeah. that's why. So yeah. don't fucking panic. Not the times I did soy sauce to a meal and the next morning woken up and you weigh more and you're like, oh, and then you remember it's because of that. Mm -hmm. Not the soya sauce, the soy sauce. So in terms of the water retention as well from hydration, if you're drinking alcohol, sometimes the next day, because you're dehydrated, you might weigh less, yep. but then the day after you might find a peak right, upwards peak because yep. you're trying to find homeostasis and you actually retain a bit more water after being dehydrated. Yep. So again, water balance can affect the scale weight. So don't panic. This is why we take a scale weight average across a week and it smooths out the data because if you've got seven data points as opposed yeah. to one, you can then take an average and then compare it to last week's average. Yeah, so one simple way to get around this and to get your head in the right place with this is stand on the scales. I want my head in your right place. <laughs> Or always, wrong place. You're, it's been in her right place. Yeah. Um, yeah, until the police came. <laughs> yeah. What were you doing to that wall? God knows. Um, Mike just got a bit aroused. Is stand on the scales, weigh yourself, drink a litre of water, weigh yourselves again, you're going to be heavier. But you know that's not body fat. And that happens throughout the whole day, over the days, over the weeks. So try and keep your water intake constant. And if you do have a spike, it's probably because of that. Don't worry about it. Anyway, so, we're going to go finish her off and uh, on to the next point. Point two, I don't know what you weigh more, you eat too much. Yeah. Um, point you're, two. You're just fat. <laughs> yeah. Point two. Are we on? We are on. Well, keep that in. Keep that in. <laughs> point two is, what time did you eat last night? Yep. That's not, I'm not asking you directly. Not a euphemism as well. Don't worry, think about it like that. That's no. got, that won't affect the scales. Calorie free, that. Calorie free. Won't affect free. the scales. Although it does taste like fish, so. Yeah. Or you could do fish supper, turn around with a chocolate surprise for <laughs> dessert. <laughs> Who knows? What more do you want? What more do you want? A bit nutty though. <laughs> Fruit and, and there's raisins in it, so. <laughs> How did the sweet corn get in here? <laughs> this shouldn't be in here. That, that's, can't have sweet corn in a dessert. No, no it doesn't work like that. Anyway, what time did you eat last night? Yep. So if you ate a little bit later, yep. you might wake up with a bit more food in your digestive tract. And then also, what time did you wake up and what time did you wait? All those things can affect things quite a lot. And often when people go out to eat, they eat late at night and they think that they've had bad food and that bad food is what's caused them to gain weight. No, it isn't. Like, it's just because you ate later on at night. Most people eat the same time between say 6 and 8 p.m. in most evenings, whereas when they go out to eat, they might eat at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. No, you've not gained fat. Then look at you've weekends as well. So weekends, again, most people's routine during the week is quite structured. They have tea yep. about the same time. They might have an evening stack or whatever, but at the weekend, they might be a bit more sporadic with their eating. Like Dan says, they might go and eat out. They might be out and about, whatever. Mm -hmm. So again, you're gonna get some scale weight fluctuations, but again, like I said before, it's just weight, yep. it's not body fat. Size of the meals as well, again, at weekends, people often eat maybe less meals and they eat more, or they just eat more in general at weekends. Yeah. Um, but often some people as well, they, they have quite sort of, I suppose, big dinners and that can massively affect things. Yeah. Um, so don't don't kind of take that scale weight every single day as a, as a given. You need to make sure you work out those averages over the week, look at your daily habits and think to yourself, as long as I weigh myself daily, every morning at the same time, roughly, without eating, you're gonna be there or thereabouts, the odd day here and there, you can just discard that. That's a good point because a, a client of mine- Thanks, mate. A client of mine who's in contest prep has just upped her fiber and her food volume, she's eating tons of veg and she's found mm. that her scale weight's gone up. It's because she's eating more in the evening yep. to keep herself satisfied before she goes to bed. So then she's gonna wake up slightly more bloated, a bit yep. more food in her gut. Um, than when she was spaced her meals out a bit more evenly. So again, it's not body fat, it's just scale weight. I'm never satisfied when I'm in bed. No, I know, neither is your missus. From what she keeps telling me anyway. It's because she's sleeping with you. Absolutely relentless she is. <laughs> Sorry, Laura. Three. Point three, point three is this hill is incredibly steep. Look at the fucking side <laughs> it's of it. incredibly steep. That's point three. 
Point, I love this. Point three, yeah, point three is don't stand on a fucking hill. Point three is you might be on your cycle. What? Not, not your bicycle. Mike gets a slot every every four weeks. He gets in a bit of a mood. He's a bit down, a bit emotional. Bleeding from my vagina. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Bleeding from his vagina. Yeah. Or his arsehole. One of the two. One, one of the two. <laughs> one of the two. We can never tell which hole it's going to be. Depends if he's done a food challenge or not. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. anyway, for all the women out there, your menstrual cycle is something that will affect your weight. So some women get it around the time of the month, some women get it 14 days in to their cycle. There's different times, different time periods with different hormones are elevated and lowered, and that can affect water retention. And again, if you keep track of these things on a daily basis, then you can you can almost predict when your weight fluctuation is going to occur. Some people don't get them, but a lot of people do. So I've seen people gain like maybe four or five pounds yeah. just over that week, and it's like, right, actually disregard what the scales are saying this week because they're not a good reflection of your yeah. of your body fat levels. So if you know it's going to come, you can preempt it. And then that way you're not going to stress out, you're not going to panic and go, oh, I've gained all this weight because you haven't. So one thing women can do with that is that you compare your weight around your cycle time to the previous month's weight. That will give you a good indication. If you're fairly consistent, some women do get yeah. do get it worse some months than others. But if you know it's fairly consistent, you can get an idea of those weights and you can compare those weights. And that will give you an idea of whether you've been losing weight or not. So don't worry if around that time of month, things do spike because everything takes over. And the other thing as well is you will sometimes get more cravings around that time. So don't be alarmed again if you do have a little bit more food say 200 calories extra you're not going to take yourself out of a deficit but if you've eaten a bit more food and that's come from veg you might weigh more because of the previous point we just spoke about so there's so many things that can affect it i tend to give my females more food in that week yep. um depending on on the female because it is still an individual but i do tend to give higher days again still pro probably within their deficit but it just means yeah. that in the other three weeks you might also push a little bit harder um it just alleviates because it is a, a physiological effect of, uh, of, a, of having a cycle. It's not just a, oh, yeah, of course cool, she's craving. It, it is, yeah, it's yeah, a real thing. thing. So yeah, sometimes just being able to manipulate your month, not just a week, doing it over a month to counteract these effects is probably beneficial. Yeah, let's go to the next point. God, we know some stuff, don't we? Don't we? <laughs> Digestion, point number four. How well you digest things. Assimilate nutrients. You've got to assimilate those nutrients, boy. When you assimilate them, stop so, talking like a cunt. If you're constipated, guess what? You're gonna weigh more. Yeah, whether that you've been to the toilet or not, makes can a difference. Be, it can make a huge difference. People, sometimes when they drastically change their diet, so they eat a lot more veg, or they don't eat enough veg, all those sort of issues that happen when you don't have enough fiber, that can really affect your scale weight, obviously, because you've got more shit inside you. Again, when people embark on a healthy eating diet as well, sometimes you might actually go up in weight, but it's because the amount of volume of food you've eaten is greater. So you might have got more in your stomach and it might have not passed through the system yet. Whereas before you were eating higher calorie, lower volume items, chocolate, junk food, etc. So you've got less food matter within you. So then obviously it's going to have a, a knock on effect onto the weight on the scale. Really fucking so. That's about it with digestion. And that honest. is about it. Yeah, that's about it. Like the other thing is you might have, if you've eaten something that doesn't agree with you, yeah. doesn't agree with you, like you might bloat. Yeah. Something like that, you get a bit of information like, 24,000 calories in 24 hours. You sometimes get the information from you're that. You're gonna wake up heavier. Yeah, you're gonna wake up heavier. Um, and it is a real thing because yeah. my, my face was fucking massive after that 24,000. So you do get water retention. Like yeah. you do um, have inflammation when you have certain items of food or a mass of, uh, a mass of food. Yeah, so don't worry about it. Again, like when you go on holiday as well, you'll notice that a lot, you'll feel quite soft and watery and bloated and puffy, and then that will go after three or four days. Like, I'm, I'm back to normal now after that. You, uh, I mean, I'm still fast, but, yeah, that's but the water retention's gone. <laughs> yeah. I'm dry as hell. You've gained a kilo of body fat, but other than I that, probably, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I probably have to be fair. Anyway, last point. Last point, stress. It's stress. the loudest corner in Bristol we picked to do this. Let's stand on the fucking M62, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Wait. Stress. How does stress impact? <laughs> point five, stress. 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 How does stress impact? Very much gain? so. Very much so. Not at all. Not at all. To, to some, some extent. extent very much so, actually, we'll go very with. So, it does. We'll go with very much so. So when people say that they are stressed and that's the reason they can't lose weight. Oh, I'm too stressed to lose weight. Yeah, you might not be losing weight on the scale, but you're definitely still okay losing body fat. That's well. if your stress isn't leading to you to eat the fucking contents of a biscuit tin. That as well, yeah. That's really important. I'm so stressed with the school run. I need a packet of digestives. Yeah, that's not stressful. Not though, is stressful, it? is it, though? Just a bit of traffic. That's traffic, isn't it? Yeah. There's plenty of that's people just that are mild far more annoyance. Stressed. Yeah, there's people, far more people who are stressed 
than you who uh, who managed to lose body fat. So just so stress can affect your scale weight though, because when your stress increases, your hormone called cortisol has gone up, which yep. can interfere with something called aldosterone receptors, which. Ooh. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. That's the hormone that um, basically regulates water in your body. It does. So I want to prove that I know something as well. Obviously. Yeah, it interferes with those receptors. So you retain a little bit more water. And then when you drop your stress, so you might relax a little bit, you might take a deload, you might have an increase in food and go to maintenance. Yeah. Then you might find that that water drops. One way to decrease stress, by the way, is to eat more food. So you know people say, oh, I ate more and lost weight. Yep, that's probably what happened. What about CBD or that? No, 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 no. They actually... what, about, what about a new pillow? Using my code Mike Twenty, that probably will work. Actually, will it? Yeah. Will it though? What, in, one, in one night. It'll one work. night. Yeah. Yeah. What about this sleep stack that I'm getting money from? Might that help. That might help you because you're getting paid for it. Yeah. That'll probably help you sleep at night. Yeah. <laughs> for a start, you're getting paid more. Yeah. Yeah. But stress, yes, stress is just part and parcel of dieting. Unfortunately, when you diet, you are stressed. When you train, you are stressed. All these things can add up and it means that sometimes you know when you take a diet break for example your weight can drop even further yeah and it's usually because you just drop that water you probably heard of uh, some people talk about like competitors talk about dropping water um, or eating more and losing weight and that's what they mean there's nothing magic they're not lost loads of body fat it's just that the water retention was masking potentially how lean they were and now they've lost that they look leaner there's nothing magic in eating more and losing weight stress done yeah that's it that's they're it. all the things that can affect your body weight so on the scales just because your weight on the scale might not be going down it doesn't mean that your body fat isn't so there's all of those things and probably even more if we actually thought about it yeah and all of these things by the way it's the, it's under the prerequisite that you're sticking to your diet if you're not sticking to your calories you've, then it probably uh, is it's body not fat. all those things you've just eaten too much food yeah don't try and billy bullshit yourself all right those things are only relevant if you've been sticking to the calories you're on and you know you're in a calorie deficit that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Watch our next video. And enjoy the rest of your day.